Hey everyone, it's your boy Sammy Caps. Today we have some more spicy PoE2 updates coming from Gamescom. Grinding Gear Games game director Jonathan Rogers sat down with Zizaran, and during the interview, we got to see some more live gameplay of the Mercenary and Warrior. In this video, we're going to review what was discussed and hopefully give you all the spicy details to get you better informed for the early access release of PoE2 on November 15th. Some of the topics we're going to broach, the advantages players can attain by switching skills in PoE2, the difficulty level of mobs in the campaign, and what players need to be prepared for. We have information on how resistances will play a role in PoE2, Jonathan and Zizaran discussed phasing in the game and how combat is different in PoE2 over PoE1. The cooldown skills were discussed and we got another look at the skill gem UI and mechanics. By the way, if you want to stay current on all information regarding Path of Exile 2 and you don't have time to scour the internet and looking for one place to get all your information and PoE2 updates, hit that subscription button to stay up to date on all PoE2 content. Okay, now let's get to the interview between Jonathan and Zizaran and some more spicy PoE2 gameplay. So during the interview, we got to see Zizaran's live gameplay of the Mercenary and the Warrior from Gamescon. And during the interview, Jonathan immediately stated that they wanted every weapon type to feel different in PoE 2 than it does in PoE. And during the live demo, Zizaran was using a crossbow and Jonathan stated in PoE 2, the crossbow will feel similar to a gun in an FPS game because you can preload different types of ammo in it and that you can switch between ammo types, which will provide a new and unique feeling. They also discussed the skill design philosophy. And in general, Jonathan stated that they wanted each skill to have a place and more specifically, when and where you want to use them. He also mentioned every skill can be a six link now, which means that he wanted to get away from players spamming one skill. And in order for that to happen, you should know, okay, this is a situation for a grenade. This is not a situation for a grenade. And Jonathan wants you to be rewarded for taking advantage of that. And they got into the discussion about builds and builds that are less complicated. What we we refer to as zero button builds, very popular in PoE. Those builds in PoE 2, well, I have some bad news for you. They're going to take a penalty over builds that are more complicated. And Jonathan elaborated on that. He stated he has no doubt players will create zero button builds in PoE 2, but he stated players will play a penalty for it. And he doesn't want zero button builds to be rewarded by the game over builds that switch skills more frequently. The game will will reward builds that are skill situation based and focused on switching skills. I guess this is something that the OG Path of Exile players are going to have to acclimatize to if they want to enjoy Path of Exile 2. Next, Jonathan and Zizran got into the difficulty of mobs in the campaign. And another interesting observation I had during this interview is that Jonathan highlighted that players will have to take a different approach when it comes to combat. Players will need to learn how many mobs your character can handle at once as you will be penalized for taking on too many. We also learned that the campaign bosses are also going to be end game bosses and that is why they are tough to fight during the campaign because they have to have skills that are worthy of an end game boss. Thanks, Mark. Next, we learned more about how resistances will be applied in PoE 2. There are a lot more varieties of resistances within areas in PoE 2. And during the live demo, Jonathan made an example of how the area Zizran was currently in had tree enemies. And he stated that some are going to be vulnerable to fire, while others in that area were resistant to fire. So he highlighted that in PoE 2, you can expect it to be reasonable for players to have more than one element to utilize and therefore players should get more advantages for switching 
between them. Again, this highlighting of situational skills, situational play style was very dominant in this conversation. And then the conversation moved on to phasing. And Jonathan personally feels that phasing whenever you want is bad. He feels there should be situations in the game where when you screw up and get cornered by enemies, you should feel some hurt. But there are options to combat this in PUE too. There's an ability. It's a spirit reservation that will cost you 100 spirit and you can turn your dodge into a teleport. And there's also a unique that gives you phasing during dodge roll. Jonathan also was asked when players can expect to get travel skills, you know, aka get me the hell out of here skills. And it was revealed during the interview, we should start seeing these skills at the end of act two and maybe act three is when we will start seeing skills that can get, that can immediately get us out of a tight situation. Jonathan also confirmed that players can expect in every act in the campaign to have one or two things that are unusual and difficult to deal with whenever you're a melee builder or range build. So Zizaran was in an area and we've seen this area before. It's the area where you're close to the sun and your character needs to not get close to the sun and stay in shaded areas. And Zizaran observantly asked, what would a melee build, how would a melee build tackle this area? Is this going to be the case in certain areas? Like what, how are melee and range builds going to counter these mechanics that are not suited to the build and Jonathan confirmed that players can expect in every act in the campaign to have one or two things that are unusual and difficult for that build, whether you're a melee build or a ranged build. The conversation got into cooldown skills, and Jonathan said that typically he tries to avoid cooldown skills where possible, but in PoE 2, when you get into the higher levels, Jonathan feels it's okay to have the occasional cooldown skill. In the demo, we got to see one of the cooldown skills, Hammer of the Gods, which totally destroyed and has unbelievable damage. We also learned that if you want life, you can get it from strength. Int will provide more mana. And if your build needs accuracy, then you want to apply more decks. And lastly, we got another look at the skill gem UI and mechanics. And every time I see this UI and Jonathan discusses the skill gem gym system it's just unbelievable i i'm gonna keep saying this i really think this is gonna lend itself to the new player and make it really new player friendly but if you're not aware gems no longer have experience like in path of exile and it's more like the d2 skill tree where you need to find the level 20 uncut gem to get a level 20 skill and again i think it's going to make the game more appealable, more attractable, and more fun, and give us those aha moments when we do find those high level uncut gems. Well, there's some more spicy updates on Path of Exile 2. Wow, the more information we get, the more this is getting spicier. I, I have to say, so a couple observations I personally have from this interview. First of all, I'm gonna link the whole interview in the body of this video. So the link will be in the link in the description of the video. Um, and thank you, Zizaran and Jonathan for doing the interview. It, it's clear to me, there's gonna have to be, in my opinion, and you guys tell me if you disagree, uh, there, there's definitely gonna have to be a mind shift from players that are used to playing Path of Exile and will be playing Path of Exile too. I'm getting the sense that there's a couple of differences, big differences between the two games. First of all, the situational combat that players are going to have to change their mindset with. Uh, you know, Jonathan elaborated and talked about how using a gr when to use a grenade, when not to use a grenade, the the advantages and the game rewarding you by switching skills and applying skills uh, dependent on the situation. These are all things that I would argue typically in Path of Exile, of course, you're always focused on the mobs you're fighting with and the resistances, what they're immune to, what they're vulnerable to. But it seems like those interactions are gonna be more frequent 
in duration and in amount in every act in every area and i think to me personally that's a shift from path of exile uh clearly players are gonna have it hit them right in the face i would suspect immediately when it comes to mob combat and the difficulty the level of difficulty in the campaign just with general combat with general mobs I think that's also going to be a learning curve. You know, Jonathan mentioned, you're going to quickly learn that how much a character, your character, can handle when it comes to how many mobs you can fight. And I took that to be, look, you're not going to be speed running through these areas in Path of Exile 2. You're going to have to be very aware of what your character can handle when it comes to approaching and combating one enemy three enemies five enemies what what's the limit because you are going to be penalized by the game these are all mind shift changes in my opinion um the fact that resistances in every area um change you know vulnerable to fire and immune to fire different mobs same area this is again intuitive you're gonna have to switch different uh skills and and such so all these things it just seems like a more intuitive interaction between the player and the enemies that it's uh approaching uh so these are all mind shift changes to me and of course the skill gem system and ui uh, that got shown again we've seen this before but again i think they've done an amazing job with making it again i'm going to say this over and over new player friendly so new player friendly i love the fact that you know jonathan keeps on mentioning how it's similar to diablo 2 it's, it's diablo 2 has a soft place in my heart i know it has a soft place in many players hearts um so that's lovely to hear and great to hear so all these things uh are i think great changes and I'm going to be very, very interested to see the feedback and, from the player base when this happens uh, to see what their take is on it. And more specifically, I'm really going to be interested to see how the 10-year veteran, the 8-year veteran of Path of Exile, what their take is on this new gameplay, this new game style with Path of Exile 2. I personally think it's a step in the right direction. Because at the end of the day, guys, Path of Exile is not going away. So if this is a game style that is not suited to you and you're a blaster and you want the screen fireworks going off, well, Path of Exile is still there. They're going to be supporting both games. Both games are going to be live. So there is everything for everyone or every type of player and what you like. So I think it's a step in the right direction and it's opening up i think a wider net and a wider player base i've said this before and i'll continue to say it but anyway time will tell let me know what your thoughts are let me know what you think if you're a new player and you've sat on the sidelines because you didn't like the high learning curve in path of exile but you're going to try poe too or if you're an eight nine ten year veteran of poe and you're seeing all this information what's your take how do you feel about this shift in gameplay and mechanics let me hear your thoughts get in the comments section all right everybody as i stated in my previous video i'll be live streaming poe2 on november 15th the channel name is sammy caps on twitch come over we have a cool chill community we'd love to have you come over and say hello all right everybody thank you for watching and we we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.